السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. Praises be to Allah. We praise Him and we seek His help. Whomsoever Allah guides is a truly guided one. Whomsoever Allah leads us say none can show Him guidance. May the best peace and blessings be upon Prophet Muhammad. Peace be upon him. My dear viewers, welcome to another live edition of Ask Quda. And uh, here is a quick reminder with our contact information, beginning with the phone numbers, area code 002, then 02 alternatively, same area code, then 01005469323, the two WhatsApp numbers, area code 001347806125, and finally, area code 01361489150, will live both on my Facebook page, M. Salah Official, and also on my YouTube uh, channel. Uh, our first caller is Sister Safiya from the USA. Assalamu alaikum, Sister Safiya. Wa alaikum assalam, brother. I have three questions. Okay, go ahead. Uh, number one is if somebody is if somebody is praying and they're they're kind of religious, they're praying, you know, doing their atkars and stuff, but still they're a little depressed. So, what would you recommend for them? That's number one. Okay. And number two, um, I had asked you this question before, but I think uh, there was a miscommunication. The question is that when you are not supposed to take a fart gusel, just you are supposed to, you don't need any, there's no major najasa, but just that you are supposed to just take a bath. Instead of taking a regular bath, if you make the sunnah prayer, sunnah, uh, sunnah gusel, and you are doing a special, um, that special gusel, would you get more reward for doing the special gusel when you're supposed to be just doing a normal bath? That was my question. Do you understand this one? Yep, I brother? do. Yes, okay. And the last one is, um, you know, you, you talked about the fart gusel last time that, that it's good to do a, um, uh, uh, do a um, um, wadu at the end just in case you end up touching the private parts. So if somebody is... Um, uh, they they are fully clothed, but they are somehow um, somehow they are itching in the private part on top of their clothes. Would that break their wudu? Okay, got three of your questions, Sister Sophia Thank from you. the U.S. Thank you, Sister. Thank you, Brother. Um, Not a problem. Okay, Assalamu alaikum, Abdul Aziz from Kenya. Assalamu alaikum, Brother Abdul Aziz. I'm Dr. Mohammed. It's a pleasure to speak to you. Likewise, Akhi. Go ahead. Barakallahu feek. Uh, okay, my question is, if um, if you donate um, kutabs to a masjid that's just being built, is that classed as sadaqa uh, jariya? All right. That's it? Do you have another question, Abdul Aziz? Yes. Okay. Uh, um, nah, that was my main one that I wanted to ask you. Okay. Could you then, give me a reply? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Hang up and you hear the reply, inshallah. Sophia from the USA, she said, what if a person is offering his prayer, reciting azkar, but he's still feeling depressed? Let's differentiate between depression, which is clinical diagnosis, which requires clinical and medical attention. It requires medical attention. That is something different. But if a person doesn't feel good, if the person is overwhelmed with worries, with that, with the problems, with afflictions, and he offers the prayers, he offers them on time, he offers them with khushu and serenity, and he recites his azkar, guaranteed, guaranteed that all of that will be removed away from him, and he will be relieved. He will not feel the same pain, the same uh, pressure. Um, Ibn al-Qayyim, may Allah have mercy on him, quoted his master and his teacher, Shaykh al-Islam, Ibn Taymiyyah, as saying, if you find a person 
offers an act of worship and he doesn't see the instant fruit of it, then he has a problem with doing it. Not with the act of worship itself. All the acts of worship, Allah the Almighty has stated in the sacred hadith that my servant will continue to draw closer to me through offering and nawafil. Initially, you offer what Allah has required you to do, what is obligatory, and there is nothing better than that. Then, if you want to draw further closer to Allah the Almighty, then the supererogatory acts of worship. You will innocently see the fruit of that. Comfort, serenity, peace of mind. All of that, the result of getting closer to Allah. But if you don't see that, it is simply due to the fact that you've been distracted. You've done the act of worship, but it was void from the serenity and khushua. Today, I was so busy, I didn't sleep well, so I prayed duha. And after I prayed duha, I just realized that I wasn't paying attention in the entire two rakahs. So I can tell why I'm not feeling good after I offer the prayer. After you offer the prayer, you're supposed to feel better. Well, because it was simply the physical movements, offering the rituals. So when the person is contemplating, pondering over the afkar which he is reciting, if he's sending a salah and a taslim upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, 10, 15, 20 minutes, no matter what kind of worries that he's experiencing, he would have an innocent relief. If he recites the adhkar concerning, you know, tafrirul hammi wal karb, morning and evening, of course, all of that will be removed away from him. Only when he is pondering over what he is reciting, it is not only the lip tongue. Barakallahu feekum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Saeed from Italy. Yes. Assalamu alaikum, Saeed. Welcome to Ask Can Good. I talk? Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. You're live on Ask Good. Wa alaikum, wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, please, uh, I want to add some caution. Go ahead. I want to add some caution. Yes, I'm listening, Said. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, I have a wife in Africa, and I'm living in Italy. So Allah grant us uh, one son. But the name ceremony, we have a, a mox that is near our house. But the imams, there are some people that, some of them, they are doing big I don't believe on them too much because of some of them, they are sitting inside room and people are coming, seeking about help. So, I want to know whether I can find a time that I can No, no, Saeed, unfortunately, the name of the ceremony Sa Saeed, or is allowed. Brother Saeed, can you hear me? Can the brothers in the control collect his questions, please? Because the connection is not good. And can I answer a question if I do not clearly understand it and comprehend it, as well as the viewers as well? Assalamu alaikum. Sister Umm Hudayfa from Morocco. Yeah. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to Ask Wada. Thank you, Sheikh. Uh, Sheikh, I have a very important question. I want to ask whether it's okay for me to divorce my husband who is um, abusing me emotionally and physically. We are married for 10 years and every year he promised me that he will not abuse me. Mm. But it's always the same. Um, my parents are here. They live in Belgium. And soon they are going away back to Belgium. So this is my only chance to divorce him because I can't live this life anymore. He's, okay. uh, he won't change, Sheikh. He, he will never change. Um, um Hudayfa, do you have any kids from him? Okay. Jazakallah khairan. Um Hudayfa, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yes, I can hear you. Do you guys have kids together? What did you say? Do you have children? Yes, we have two sons, mm, an uh, eight-year-old and a six-year-old. This is my problem. If I will get a divorce with my husband, I will go away to Belgium. And my husband never went to Belgium, so I don't know what to do. I give him years of chances. He doesn't change. Mm. So. 
Okay, I got your question, Sister Umu Huzaifa from Morocco. Um, uh, Sophia from the USA, her second question was, instead of making wudu, if I just take a bath with the intention of performing ghost, is there an extra word? Yes, there is an extra word. Not only that, if you while performing wudu, we know that the Almighty Allah says in the ayah of Surah Al-Ma'idah, and number 6, chapter number 5, Ya ayuha ladhina amanu, idha qumtum ila salati faqsilu wujuhakum, wa aidiyakum ila al-marafiqi. The Prophet said in the hadith, There is a previous discussion. So he said that on the Day of Judgment, my Ummah will be summoned and called upon on the Day of Gathering, which means they would have bright body parts they will be illuminating due to performing wudu. So let whoever increase the area which would have this nur on his or her body. If he can do that, let him do it. How? By increasing the area which he washes during wudu. Yani, Allah says, you wash your arms up to the elbows. So if you go up a little bit, this is preferable. This is preferable. Likewise with the feet, with the ankles, you go up a little bit. This is uh, preferable because the Prophet said in the, uh, in the hadith, فَمَنِ اسْتَطَاعَ أَنْ يُطِيلَ غُرَّتَهُ فَلْيَفْعَلِ So imagine, I'm not just uh, performing wudu and washing the body parts, I'm washing the entire body while intending to perform wudu in order. So obviously it is better and there is an extra word in that. She also said that you've mentioned in the hadith that touching one's private part uh, may invalidate his or her ablution. Correct. And there is a difference of opinion in this regard due to conflicting references and which hadith abrogated which reference and so on. So we said when it comes to, uh, you know, a difference of opinion in this regard, precaution is preferable. So she said, what if? the person is itching in the pelvic area and from above the clothes he have to scratch and come close to the private part would that nullify the wudu no it's only touching one's private heart, uh, part with bare hands that's why we normally speak about it while performing uh, ghusl uh, abdul aziz from kenya i believe he said that if a person finds a masjid under construction and he donates towards building this masjid. Does this consider a continuous charity, sadaqah jariya? Yes, indeed. Based on the definition of the continuous charity, which I will share with you soon after the following call, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Buba from Gambia. Assalamu alaikum, Buba. Wa alaikum assalam, Sheikh. How are you? I'm doing fine, alhamdulillah. Thank you for asking, brother. Go ahead. Yeah, Sheikh, I need um, clarification. I have seen uh, many imams in the Gambia during Fajr prayer. During, during, the, yeah, during the second record of the Fajr prayer, before going into Ruku, they will um, recite something silently, whether supplication. So I'm confused whether this is um, an innovation or is a uh, part of uh, Sunnah. You mean the pausing and the moment of silence before make ruku and after reciting the surah, correct? Exactly, yes. Okay, any other questions? No, thank you. You're welcome. Quickly, Buba from Gambia. Yes, this is from the Sunnah. It has been narrated that the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, used to have three sakatat or pausing or moments of silence in the beginning of the prayer after the beginning takbir because he would be reciting the beginning supplication. Then after reciting Surah Al-Fatiha and before merging into reciting the following ayat, he would pause. And then after finishing the recitation of the ayat and before making the ruku, he will pause for a moment before making the ruku. So that is the sunnah. Brother Muhammad from Germany, 
السلام عليكم محمد ايوه وعليكم السلام ورحمه الله يا شيخ اهلا وسهلا وعليكم السلام ورحمه الله جزاك الله خير والله يا جزانا واياكم اخي واحد اجن وسيابات بعض كان معادتين كان اي do I have to take off the cloth to apply on myself or is I can do it on while I have cloth to be honest with you Muhammad I didn't uh, quietly get your question yeah about the sunnah from Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam معادتين when قل والله ربي بالفرق بالرب الناس in the night when you apply on yourself is it uh, only with cloth or without cloth Right. While wearing your clothes? Yeah, can, yeah, can we can we apply on ourselves while well, you have clothes? But oh, it must be. Yeah, yeah, of course, know. of course, of course. Okay, I got your question. To be honest with you, because the question is kind of, uh, you know, um, I don't have a weird question, but let's say that kind of strange. <laughs> Maybe it is the same. Yeah, when you recite the three uh, last chapters of the Quran, then you walk over your face. He's asking, do you have to uh, keep your clothes on or do you have to you take your clothes off? It, it doesn't matter. Some people, when they go to sleep, they take their shirts off. Uh, some people, they sleep in their undergarment. It's okay. So can I just recite and walk over my bare body? Yes. You only remember, I just, just answered a few minutes ago, Avoid in touching the private part in order to keep your ablution, your tahara or wudu. Well, I'm wearing my clothes. This is the norms to do it while wearing uh, your clothes. Thank you, Muhammad from Germany. Abdul Aziz from Kenya, who asked earlier about investing in a masjid, uh, a mosque under construction, and whether this would consider uh, as a continuous charity. And I said yes. What is a sadaqa al jariya or the continuous charity? What is it? Well, it is understood from the term continuous. Its word is continuous. It is not like one-time deal. Like you buy somebody a sandwich. You invite some people for a meal. You send uh, some food to uh, needy people. That's one-time deal. But continuous, even when I die, I still get a word. Why? Because its benefit is continuous. So its reward will be related to its continuous benefit to others. An orphanage, hosting orphans, raising orphans, graduating orphans, 10 years, 20 years, 100 years, 200 years, 300 years. Reward is continuous as long as it is beneficial to others. Water fountain, it's been there for three years, four years, four years continuous reward well it got stuck it rusted we threw it away alhamdulillah you got the reward as long as it was working and that's why I advise whenever it comes to building a masjid share the reward raise to invest in the construction in the infrastructure in the in the in the foundation because this is permanent it can last for a hundred or 150 maybe to 100 years so investing in a masjid is continuously, is a definitely a continuous charity. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. from Italy. Sikofa. Hello. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi My question is, one of my friends asked your question, but you don't, you don't understand it. He's, he means that in Subhat prayer, when you do this raka, check on raka, after the starting the, the fatiha and the surah, before you go to ruku, sometimes our place, they, they, they do kunut. It's asking that whether the sunnah or not. Okay. Okay. I got your question. You, 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 I got your question. You, you yes, I understand. Uh, Sikupa from Italy is asking about reciting kunut before going for ruku'ah. Obviously, al-qunut is sunnah in the witr prayer. So I would assume you're asking about reciting qunut, which is making dua, and raising the hands in the prayer, in the witr prayer. If we're praying taraweeh in congregation, so by the end, the imam recites qunut. It's permissible. 
and prescribe both to make the qunut before the ruku'ah or after rising up from the ruku'ah. Both have been narrated from the Prophet ﷺ. So the Imam chooses to do this or that, follow your Imam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sister Umm Mustafa from the KSA. Uh, Sheikh, assalamu alaikum. How are you, Sheikh? Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, I'm doing fine. Thank you for asking, Sister Umm Mustafa. Uh, once again, uh, once again, Jazakallah khair. Uh, Sheikh, uh, I work in a hospital and we had a, we have a masjid attached to the hospital. So uh, we on the female, on the ladies section, we had some problem with the microphone and uh, the maintenance was not good. So we personally took it up as, a, as an initiative and collected some money and uh, did some alterations for the uh, masjid. Uh, uh, th then uh, there were some staff who were divided on this opinion. They said it is not our business to do this. It is the business. The hospital. I mean, the uh, uh, the masjid belongs to the hospital, and it is the hospital's duty to do that. So, and uh, so, I was just wondering if uh, really uh, if all our efforts of having collected the money and contributed uh, is uh, is in vain, or uh, is it really uh, was it our responsibility to do it, and uh, was was it the uh, maintenance belongs to the institution. Okay. okay. I got your question, you. Sister Umm Safa from the KSA. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Abdul Basir from the USA. Assalamu alaikum, Brother Abdul Basir. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Sheikh. How are you, Brother? Alhamdulillah. Go ahead, please. Brother, I have a few questions. Mm -hmm. Can you hear me, brother? Yes, I can. Okay, the first question, can uh, we buy in the USA uh, a house uh, through a mortgage from a bank? Next. The, other, the second question is uh, buying uh, a car uh, from a dealership, but the question is the dealership uh, uh, sell the car to a bank and the bank give us the loan and through that loan we bank, uh, buy a car and monthly we pay some money to the next, bank. Next next question. Do you hear me? Brother? Yes. Your third question please. Bring your third question. Okay. Okay. Third question. Can you say to a non-Muslim God bless you? Okay. And the fourth question uh, is, um, I forgot the fourth question. Okay, well, these are uh, three questions. Because you said you only okay. have three questions. Go ahead. So, uh, now, uh, brother, can you call him as a brother? Whom? Whom? Yeah, Abdul uh, You got my fourth question? What is your fourth question, if you can hear me? Can you call a non-Muslim as a brother? Can you tell him, uh, have a good night, brother? Okay. Got your questions. Abdul Basir from the USA. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Shadi Khan from Italy. Assalamu alaikum, Shadi. Okay, my question is, like, my friends say, like, near his house, there are more that the imam is doing innovation and is also doing so his wife has a baby, lot of them. So he wants to do naming ceremony. He wants to keep, uh, leave that mosque and go to other mosque. That mosque, the imam is good and he's very, he's very friendly. So he's asking that one, is that a good thing or not? So leave the mosque near you and go to other mosque. Okay. Yeah, that's the question. Okay. So do you have another question? No, thank you. You're welcome. Shadi Khan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sister Fawziya from the UK. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sister Fawziya, welcome to Ask Uda. Yes, brother, I have a few questions uh, to ask. Um, my first question is... Uh, uh, I was just reading uh, online some uh, was and 
I, I checked that uh, uh, there is a one fatwa from Saudi Arabia that when we do pray Salah in our sajda, we can do dua in our language because we are not actually Arabic speak, uh, speaking. So in in our uh, sajda, in namaz, in salah, fard salah or sunnah salah, we can do such as in our own language. But in my country, we actually don't do it because we think the Salah is only in Arabic language. Mm. So I just, my first question is, can I do some, I have some problems, let's say. So I can I ask uh, in Sajda, because Sajda is the more uh, closest point, you know, to close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if I ask anything from Allah in my own language, because I don't know in Arabic language. Okay. Uh, I got your question. Say. I, I got your question, Sister Fawzia. Do you have another one? Is sorry. Do you have another question? Yes, of course. I okay, go ahead. Questions. Go ahead. So my another question is, my um my. Lagrand him Jannah. Um, he actually didn't do his Hajj before he passed away. He had he was so busy in, in life doing this, doing that, but he couldn't do Hajj. So can I do Hajj on his behalf? And do I have to do another Hajj for myself? Or would one Hajj going to be okay for him and for me? Uh, Sister Fawzia, you know have you done Hajj for yourself first? No, I haven't done anything so far, okay. no. And the person whom you're talking about is your late dad. Am I correct? He's my dad, my okay. father. Okay. So, Sister Fawziya, so you... So, basically, yeah, mm -hmm. my father passed away and he didn't do Hajj. Okay. And I have planned to do Hajj in future. So, I want to do Hajj on his behalf and for myself as well. So, do I have to do two Hajj or can it be just in one? Okay. The question is that. Thank you, Sister Thank Fawziya. Thank you so much. You're most welcome. Uh, Muhammad from the KSA. Assalamu alaikum, brother Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum, say, how are you? I'm doing great, alhamdulillah. Thank you for asking, brother Muhammad. I hope you're doing well nice as well. Nice to hear from you, say. Nice to hear from you. And you are, uh, do, you are doing a good job, mashallah. You are helping mm. lots of answers. Let Allah bless you and your family mm. and whole mm. Muslims. Amin, say. Amin. Amin, amin. Go ahead, Akhi Muhammad. Okay. Say, I have one question. You know, I have one scenario. My one of the great friend, he is actually from one of the foreign country. He is working in KSA. What happened is he passed away. He is a Muslim, practicing Muslim. He passed away around two years ago. But I do remember a problem. When he when he passed away, because he has to go, his, his family members want his dead body back to his country. So his dead body has to go through a post-mortem because it was a sudden death. And then uh, the, bo the body did not bury here. That was waiting there for nearly two months. After that, only the body sent back to their country. So my question is, say, uh, how that uh, can you explain? Uh, does this uh, body? He is uh, really a practicing Muslim. He is really observing all the uh, Sunnah, and he is a very good Muslim. But uh, you know, everybody was sad. He has to go through this way. But uh, can you explain? Does he has to? He is he having any pain or anything during the? postmortem or uh, during this process and all these things does he has to go through the pain or any how that in the sharia can you please explain that one say Taib, Akhi Muhammad I got your question uh, but we gotta take a short break now and inshallah soon after we return I will answer hopefully inshallah all your pending questions and uh, I hope we'll be able to take some more calls inshallah we'll be back in a couple minutes please stay tuned intentions today issues around the heart how to be a leader how to understand yourself and others community is a diverse group of people how will you deal with the problems charity begins at home as a proverb would say how can we make a successful family among ourselves communication skills is one of the most important things that you should know 
how do we deal with the many conflicts in our lives today? Join us on Huda TV in Youth Matters, where we'll talk about different aspects and subjects related to youth and highlight the importance of youth in the development of the Ummah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. There are so many stars around us nowadays in all fields, but there are real stars. On the course of 30 episodes, we will be looking deeply into the lives of 30 companions of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this generation that received the light directly from him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and they saw the implementation of the Quran by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They lived it and they passed it on to the next generation. We will be looking into their lives. We'll be looking into the life of Khadija radiallahu anha, Uthman, Abu Bakr, Umar, Ali, and so many other beautiful names and shiny stars. This is all on Huda TV. Join me. One day the Prophet ﷺ came out to the companions عنهم, and he said to them, Don't you bear witness that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one worthy of worship and he has no partners? Don't you bear witness that I'm the messenger of Allah? Don't you bear witness that the Quran is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So the companions عنهم, they said, Yes, O Prophet of Allah. Then the Prophet وسلم, said, فأبشروا. Have the glad tidings, the great news as a result of this. Because the Quran has two ends to it. One end with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and one end in your hands. Then he said to them والسلام, Hold fast to it because you would never be led astray and you would never be perished if you're holding fast to the book of Allah. Because of that, join us every week in Quran in depth where we recite and reflect and ponder over the verses of the Quran. We go in depth into the verses following the ways of the Prophet وسلم, and the companions عنهم, when they used to take the verses, one set of verses after another. They would recite it, they would reflect upon the meanings of it and they would act according to it and then they would go to the next set of verses. Join us every week in Quran in depth so that we would recite and reflect and learn more about the book of Allah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless our life and to make us among those who follow the Quran and the way of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back. Our phone numbers and contact informations should appear on the bottom of the screen for the reminder. And we already have a caller, Sister Maryam from the UK. Welcome to Ask with us, Sister Maryam. Hello? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, I can't hear you very well. Well, we can hear you very well can as you well. Can you raise your voice, please? Okay. Uh, I have two questions. Okay. Uh, the first question is, if it is, it is allowed, if it is allowed to a Muslim woman to teach uh, men and women? Okay. 
And the second question is, if he's allowed children, for example, uh, you know, sometimes the school, they give trips for children to go away and they sleep outside like two days, three days. If he's allowed for children, they sleep out, you know, it's like mixing the, uh, girls and boys and they sleep outside like this. I would like to know if he's allowed. Okay. <clears throat> I got your questions. Sister Mariam from the UK. Rumi from the USA, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to Ask with Rumi. Wa alaikum assalam, uh, Sheikh. I have one question about a nafal prayer. Mm -hmm. uh, can, at the Fazer time, after Fazer time start, can we pray any nafal and then two raka sunnah, two naka first? Because I know that after first, uh, pay, uh, Fazer prayer, you cannot pray any other prayer. So can we do that? All right. Thank you, Sister Rumi. Did you get my question? Okay. Yes, I did. Thank you so much, brother. You're most welcome. <clears throat> Saeed from Italy. He wants to perform maqiqa for his child, but the nearby masjid, he says, he claims that the Imam does innovations and so on. Aqiqa doesn't have to be in the masjid. You can throw it at home or anywhere else. You can even distribute the meat, raw meat, and by that, the aqiqa will be fulfilled. As far as the, as the issue of whether the Imam is doing innovations and what kind of innovations that prevents me from following the Imam, that's a different story. But I answer your question concerning the Aqiqa. Um, <coughs> um Hudayfa from Belgium, she was kind of emotional and she said that after 10 years of abuse, she decided to divorce her husband. I asked her, whether she had children and she said yes that is the dilemma I have two sons you know before I asked whether you have children or not when a husband is laying his hand on his wife and he's abusive whether physically or morally he's insultive he's cursing he's whatever you don't have to take that you don't have to take that either asking for divorce or khula but whenever we have children the story is different i don't want to say slightly different or completely different because it depends on the uh, extent of the abuse you don't have to undergo any of that but what we say the almighty allah says in surat an nisa fa'in khiftum shiqaqa baynihima fab'athu hakaman min ahlihi wa hakaman min ahliha in yurida islahan yuwaffiqillahu baynahuma before divorce which is the last resolution, severing the relationship, appoint an arbitrator from his family or from his side, could be his friend, and another from your family. They sit and they talk. Because you know what, sister, sometimes a person does not know that he's abusive. He thinks he's okay. Because he's outside with people okay. Then at home is different. And this is a dilemma. Because the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said in the hadith, the sign of goodness is to be good to your wife. He said, khayrukum, khayrukum li ahlihi. The best of all of you is the one who is best to his wife, to his family, to his children, in door, with his household. Then he remarked, saying, peace be upon him, saying, wa ana khayrukum li ahli. Our role model and best example was the best to his wives. May the peace and blessings be upon him. So we give him... Um, an ultimatum, a final notice that this is halal and this is haram. Some people misinterpret the Quran and the Sunnah. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, وَلَا يَضْرِبُ إِلَّا لَئِيم. Number one, he never laid his hand on anyone, a woman, a wife, even a servant, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Take him as your own mother. Okay? Abdullah ibn Abbas radiyallahu anhuma, the great interpreter of the Qur'an, Tarjuman al-Qur'an, said when he was commenting on the ayah of وَلَهُنَّ مِثْلُ الَّذِي عَلَيْهِنَّ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ يعني The wives do have rights similar to those which are due upon them towards their husbands, mutual rights and obligations. He said, I like to adorn myself, beautify myself for my wife the same way I like her to adorn herself for me because we have equal rights and obligations. So the arbitrators will decide whether this is really abusive or not. And we'll give him the ultimate, and this is the last time. If you do it again, then uh, 
she is absolutely free to demand khul or separation or divorce. So resort to obligation first, Sister uh, Umm Hudayfa, for the sake of your two kids. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brother Muhammad from the USA. Uh, Welcome, Islam, Rahmatullahi Barakatuh, Sheikh. Uh, Sheikh, I have uh, one question. So, yeah. is there any sign which Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala gives before accepting uh, the believers' dua? So, I have been making dua for a very long time, but off late, I have been having a different feeling about the dua. So, is there any sign, or it is just that my my feeling? Jazakallah khairan. Thank you, Brother Muhammad from the USA. Jazana wa my dear viewers, I'm going to um, uh, put a hold on all the phone calls because we have, mashallah, more than 15 questions pending from this episode. I have to tackle quickly, inshallah, and we only have a few minutes. Uh, so let me take them in order. Where is the third question? Yeah. Um Safa from the KSA, she works at our hospital. The Masjid, unfortunately, is not maintained very well. Sound system is terrible. This is typical. So in Muslim countries, mashallah, hospitals, hotels, five-star hotels, they care about the details of everything, the entrance, the lobby, the seats, and the smell and everything, the kitchen, the dining area. Where is the masjid? I want to offer the prayer. It's in the basement. It's in the garden outside. It's next to the kitchen where you'll be praying and the exhaust is blowing, the oil and the smell. Why? You're making a bunch of money, you're making a fortune. The most important thing in life is a salah. And if you are smart the least, you know that all the money that you're making from this hospital is nothing compared to making a place available for people to pray. This is a sadaqah jariya. This is a continuous charity. So unfortunately, uh, business owners, they don't care the least. Business owners and governments are alike. They don't care about, uh, in many cases, I do not generalize, about the masajid. Recently, I visited a Syrian family who have a factory. And mashallah, they invited me to the office. And I found the whole floor next to the owner's office. A huge masjid. I said, is that right? This is a huge masjid. He said, because I have 2,000 employees. He made a masjid enough to encompass 2,000 employees in the Jumu'ah prayer. May Allah bless him and his family. What if they're not doing their homework? What if they're not taking care of the masjid? You and your colleagues raised fund in order to maintain it, to fix the sound system. That's a continuous charity. So those who say that it's not our duty, yes, you're right. But if no one is doing it, I'm going to do it. I need that, so, that reward and that thawab. Uh, next, Abdul Basir from the USA has four or five questions. Mortgage, buying house with mortgage. This is pure interest-based transaction, riba. Absolutely forbidden. Likewise, when you buy a car from a dealer, then he refers you to a bank to finance the, um, the price. That too is an interest-based transaction. If it is financed by owner, by the dealer, so he says that the car normally is uh, 15 grand, but since you're not paying cash, I sell it for 20 on a period of three years. I am the financer, so I will take the payment from you, and the bottom line amount is 20. That is permissible. But when he refers you to a bank, that's interest. Uh, can I say to a non-Muslim, may God bless you? Yes. And the greatest blessing is to guide that person to Allah's oneness. Can I call a non-Muslim a brother, inviting him? Yes, he is your brother. All human beings, kullukum li Adam wa Adam min turab. Qabil and habil, one in hellfire and one in paradise, but they are brothers. And they are blood brothers, they are from Adam. All human beings are the children of Adam. Ya bani Adama, when Allah calls on the children of Adam. So we are related when it comes to the origin. Uh, next question, Sister Fawziya from the UK. Can I recite supplication and make prayer or dua in my sujood while prostrating in my language because I don't understand Arabic? Yes, that is permissible. But in my culture they say, I'm telling you it is permissible. 
and take advantage of this very precious time and make dua in your mother tongue the language that you know better. In fard prayers, in nafila namaz, in any prayer, any sajda, you want to invoke Allah. You don't know Arabic, you can make it in your mother tongue. Her father died before performing hajj. Can I make hajj in his state? Only when you perform hajj for yourself first. You cannot do two in one. So you perform hajj because the Prophet وسلم, said to somebody who is making talbiyah, لبيك اللهم on behalf of so and so. He said, who is so and so, Shubrama? He said, a friend of mine who did not do hajj. He said, have you done your hajj first? He said, no. He said, do your hajj, then you can do hajj on behalf of others. May Allah bless you and have mercy on your father. And brothers and sisters, those who have the means, do hajj as soon as possible. Do not delay. Do not say, next year I'm going to take a vacation or two years later. You have the means. You live in Europe. You live in the States. It's easy. It's affordable. You can get a visa. Do it as soon as possible. Um, I know it's time, but we have to wrap up those questions. Brother Muhammad from the KSA said that a friend of his was very religiously committed, but when he died, he's an expat living in the KSA, that they wanted to send his body overseas, so his body lasted two months outside the grave before he was buried, obviously in the fridge. So he's asking, what is the reasoning? He was a righteous man, and what happened to him during this time? Brothers and sisters, write in your wasiyah, in your request, that I should be buried wherever I die. That is the sunnah. This is what the Prophet ﷺ said. Shipping the deceased to another country is impermissible. The sunnah is to be buried where you died. You have Muslim graveyard, alhamdulillah. The dua of your family will reach you even if you died on Mars or in the moon. They make dua for you, it will reach you. The idea of we need to take a last look at him and so on, the body will be preserved and the uh, abdomen has to be taken out in order to preserve the body with chemicals and a lot of things. And the honor of a believer when he dies is to hasten to bury them. If he died at night, bury them at night. Do not wait until the morning. If he died in the morning, bury them once you finish the paperwork immediately um, uh, the following question sister Maryam from the UK can a Muslim woman teach men and women yes you're wearing your proper hijab and you're talking properly many Muslim women since the time of the Prophet ﷺ have been teaching men and women are alike okay so if you're wearing your proper hijab and if you are addressing your presentation modestly that is permissible uh, mixed trips, field trips, where the boys and girls at school, they spend the uh, three nights and three days outside, maybe in the field. Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, and, and all of that. Boys and girls, nope. I never, ever, ever, ever let my daughter or boy have a mixed trip where they spend the night outside in the open together or mixed indoor gathering where they spend the night together. It's very dangerous. In those uh, places, you call them from the UK. You know, I, 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 I was counseling in many of these events and I know what is happening. So it is not safe. It is not safe. Uh, uh, Sister Ruby from the USA. No, Sister Ruby, after you pray, Fed, you shouldn't be praying anything until 15 minutes past sunrise. Only if you miss the sunnah before Fajr, he didn't pray it because you entered the masjid and they were praying already. So you can soon after Fajr make up the two rakahs, the sunnah before Fajr. Besides that, you shouldn't be praying anything until 15 minutes past sunrise. Uh, last question, Brother uh, Muhammad from, I hope it is the last question. Brother Muhammad from the USA. The pre-signs for the acceptance of your dua. What if I tell you that, Alhamdulillah, if I'm making a good dua and I'm certain that Allah will answer my dua, I already have a sign that my dua not will be answered, it's already answered. Umar al-Khattab used to say, I'm not worried about answering my dua. 
I'm worried about making the dua. Because if Allah the Almighty inspired you, inspired you to make dua, that means He wants your dua to be answered. It's definitely answered in one of three ways. Sooner or later, based on Allah's will being acquainted with what we need and what is best for us and with His divine wisdom. So He delivers whenever He knows that is the right time and with a measure. So once you raise your hands and you made the dua, consider it done. Don't worry about the ijaba. It has been answered already. Brothers and sisters, thank you so much. May Allah accept from all of us. May Allah grant us forgiveness for our shortcomings and our sins and mistakes and guide us to what is best. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Allah is my heart's speech. Your mercy is what I beseech. Keep in my heart your remembrance and in your deen allow me to advance. Help me in my quest. Permit me to pass the ultimate test. Help me in my quest. Permit me to pass the ultimate test. Allah is my heart's speech. Your mercy is what I beseech. Keep in my heart your remembrance and in your deen allow me to advance.